I first encountered this cello uh, in 1983 um, when a friend of mine, a pianist I often work with, um, sent me this catalogue from Sotheby's auction house. Um, landed and I thought, why has he done that? And I've thumbed through the pages and there was this Barjansky Stradivarius cello. Now there was always a, a slight confusion as to which Barjansky this was, but I, it's now been established to be the cellist Serge Barjansky, um, as opposed to Alexander Barjansky, who uh, was the premier, uh, who premiered Block Shaloma and the Delius Cello Concerto. Um, I, I didn't know at the time anyway. I went along and tried out this cello in the auction house, in this tiny little room. Um, and I just knew it was better than any cello I'd played on before. I was 32 at this point. Um, and I, it wasn't a question of could I afford to get this cello? It was really like, could I afford not to get the cello? And I, a lot of people assumed that it had been bought by somebody else, um, but this was actually not the case. I was earning quite well at that point. I was playing lots and lots of concerts and I had a friendly bank manager and I said to him, look, um, can I please take out a massive loan against the value of this cello? And uh, luckily he was a music lover and these, perhaps these kind of things wouldn't happen today. Um, but I did secure a big loan against the value of that cello. Um, and I never regretted it. And actually as an investment, it's a safer investment, something that perhaps a non- you know, someone who doesn't know about string instruments will never quite understand. It's a safer investment than a house um, because if a house is in an area which maybe goes downhill or in a country that goes downhill, um, the cello or the violin is still um, playable in Japan or elsewhere. So, you, you know, a, a cello or a violin a good, is a fantastic investment and, and I think always will be. Uh, but that's certainly not the reason I bought it. Um, I bought it because of its extraordinary qualities. Um, if it has a real, real strength, it's its A string. It's the top string. Although it also has, has bass in abundance as well. Um, it's a wonderful cello. I didn't find it easy to play at first. Um, it hadn't apparently been played on for 40 maybe years and had been sitting in a bank vault somewhere. Um, and... Every time I played it, um, I took it out of its case. Um, it's, it was sounding different, and it took me a long, long time, really, uh, to, to get used to it. The other main difference was that the cellos I'd had before, I sort of felt I, would, I could tell them how to play. With this Strad, you couldn't do that. Um, you had to work with it. And there was also a, a, definitely a, a slightly strange thing that I would feel with it which was that when I, every time I played new repertoire or I played different repertoire, I would suddenly feel, oh, this cello's played that before. This cello knows this piece of music. I particularly felt that with the Dvorak. Uh, and it's a, it's a very strange feeling. And then, of course, the, the more recent works or new pieces that, that were being written, obviously, it, it, the cello had not played these um, and we had to work together to, to get the best out of that but there was certainly I remember with the Dvorak thinking ah I'm, I'm on some home ground here with this cello